Do people in the animation industry trace? You know, the practice of tracing is often looked down by people who are trying to get into the industry or students of the craft. It's considered that if you trace, it means you're unskilled, you're a cheater and a fraud, and you can't do anything original. And that's usually the stigma when it comes to tracing. However, that's not always the case, and you'd be surprised to hear the practice of tracing is commonly practiced in studio environments. For those who say professionals never trace or are a master of their own skill, they would never resort to such lowly tactics, are you sure you know what you're talking about? Hey guys, it's Tsuji Kapitoa, and today I'd like to talk about the practice of tracing. Do professionals within the animation industry actually commit the dark and forbidden art of tracing? And how often is this cardinal sin committed? First off, let's talk about what is tracing or what I consider tracing. Tracing is the practice of drawing over an existing image, whether it's a film still, a photography, reference material, or another artistic work. It could just be merely drawing over something just for reference or really taking a lot of things verbatim from the original source. The practice of rotoscoping also falls into this category. It is a practice that has existed throughout history. And the way I would summarize it is that it's a tool. It is practiced by both the skilled and the unskilled, the professional and the beginner, the legit and the fraud. And because of this, this practice has been met with a lot of controversy. So I'm not going to get into too much detail about the controversy of tracing, but I'm just going to talk about the general criticisms for it because it's often met with that. If you just search for art tracing on Google Images, I'm pretty sure it's always going to be related to two things. The issue of art theft, aka stealing other artists' work, and tracing as a crutch. In the online space, there are many artists being called out for tracing over another artist's work, which is the result of stealing another artist's approach. And that also leads to artists who do trace being called out for not being original. The other issue is, like I said earlier, the crutch. Being that there's this notion that artists should be able to use their own mental library, their skills, their sheer imaginations, or just loosely using reference. And it's because of this, anyone who uses tracing as a practice is deemed as either lazy or they're unskilled or they can't draw unless they're tracing. While there are some cases that prove that point, it's not fair to say that anyone or everyone that traces is lazy, incompetent, or a stealer. So instead of relaying the cheesy, tracing is bad, tracing is cheating, or tracing is stealing, I also want to talk about how tracing is a practice that is commonly used in our work and how it can be both effective and necessary. So let's get one thing out of the way. Whatever your views are about the practice of tracing, tracing is a tool. And like any other tool, you can use it for good things and bad things. It's just there for an artist's disposal. Again, we've all heard the cheesy opinions about tracing being bad or tracing is cheating. These beliefs are corny as hell and many professionals are tired of hearing it. Is tracing a legit way to learn drawing? I talk about many ways to learn drawing that are great, such as blind contour drawing or doing frame by frame studies and drawings from live action footage into your animation project. However, what tracing does is that it really forces you to look at your reference and really break it down. When I take a model sheet, for example, from an animation production, I draw over it to see how I can break the shapes down and measure things like proportion. How do I translate it in a way that I can understand it? I can also use it to understand the language of design, like how they use asymmetry, how they use graphic design, how they use lines to describe form. I'm forcing myself to observe. Unlike blind contour, which is, you know, drawing a reference or subject without looking at your drawing, this is really enforcing the analysis more so than the interpretation because sometimes, you know, when I heavily reference something, even when I'm not drawing over it, I still do a bit of my interpretation where I change the proportions a bit, I change the style, and sometimes, you know, our own interpretations can bring bad habits that doesn't allow us to absorb what we're studying. When it comes to tracing animation, I can see that it can be really valuable to learning the process of a pipeline or how to break down animation. I probably wouldn't recreate an existing piece of animation verbatim, but there's a lot of valuable things that you can learn from it. I came across this video of a Mega Man 8 opening redone and retrace in Adobe Animate to create a vector 4K HD remake of an intro from a 480p PlayStation 1 FMV. I can only imagine that this individual learned a lot about the program, the pipeline, 
probably absorbed some drawing muscle memory and learned a bunch of other artistic choices along the way. And here's the thing about learning how to draw. You know, there's no real right or wrong or only way to learn how to draw. I think there's a lot of like opinions about that, but a certain practice enables you to learn something specific or you're taking everything with a grain of salt. Whatever you choose to do, whether it involves tracing or not tracing, have an objective of what you're trying to learn from the experience and be aware of it. So when it comes to the animation industry, do professionals actually trace? So I'm going to start off by saying not all professionals use the practice of tracing, but you'd be surprised how many professionals there are in this industry that use tracing as a method for work. Remember, you have to understand that in a professional setting, you have to use whatever methods that are available to you to get a task done in a timely and effective manner. Remember, what you might call cheating can also be known as working smarter. This does not mean they commit plagiarism, and I'll get to that soon. I'm also not saying that all professionals trace, but to say that no professional in the industry uses the practice of tracing is an absurd statement. Don't kid yourself. So next I want to talk about examples that I've personally seen where tracing is used by my fellow coworkers. I've seen skilled artists use tracing as a warm-up method. Let me explain. Sometimes I work in the action genre that needs decent figure invention skills for action scenes. Some artists warm up by grabbing images of dynamic poses, whether it's stills from a video file or maybe it's just a figure, and then just draw and trace over them. This warms up the muscle memory for your shorthand drawings and just to get you a bit more loose. I know when I have to animate a character design, I look at the model sheets and I pretty much just draw over them. I draw over them, I'm tracing the lines, I'm finding the shape language of these designs and drawings. I'll break it down into basic forms, making notes of proportion, how to break a complex figure into more simple shapes. Kind of related to the warm up method where I'm trying to find shorthands for these designs that I personally can use. And just to calibrate my muscle memory. Now, working on a bunch of cinematic TV shows recently, 3D models are commonly used, especially for sets and backgrounds. There are many reasons why a production would opt to have a 3D set built. One reason being consistency, a consistency in proportion, a consistency in staging, how the characters relate to the set, and the necessity of finding different angles and shots using that set. Without having to come up with a drawing entirely from scratch if you just wanted to have a different angle, you could just take a screen grab from the 3D set of the angle that you want and then just trace over it. And the consistency being that every other story artist is pretty much using the same set. I know when I was working on the Dusk's Flight trailer, I pretty much just modeled the 3D set in Blender using very primitive shapes and rough textures just to get an idea of the materials, the lighting and all that, and then bringing those screen grabs into Photoshop to paint on top of it to get a more painterly look. It takes a lot of time to figure out layout, camera angles, and perspective entirely by, you know, scratch. Complex perspective by hand is really hard, and tracing over an existing 3D set makes sense for production with a tight deadline. If I need to draw an accurate looking car in the scene, I would honestly go to sketchfab.com, find a good angle of a 3D model of a car just by browsing it and then just getting a screen grab of it, putting it into my file and then just drawing over it as a reference or foundation. I've seen story artists take photos or screen grabs of other existing material or reference to draw over. Some artists take pictures of themselves and then just draw on top of that. Especially when you're just trying to get something right, but you don't have enough time to master it by mind, heavy reference or tracing makes the most sense. Hell, if you want me to become more of a smartass, there's even a practice in 2D animation called shift and trace. It's when you take your animation keys, usually two keyframes, and manipulate them around so they're matching positions and rotation, just so that you can make an in-between that matches its solid consistency. This saves a lot of time and energy because trying to do everything by eye and constantly flipping back and forth can also waste a lot of time and energy. Rotoscoping is the practice of drawing over existing footage with animation tools. Some people like to see this as tracing over live action footage. Some can argue that it's there to achieve realistic looking animation, especially if the reference is coming from something that's live action. But I like to be on the side where it's really just a stylistic choice that uses the practice of tracing. There are plenty of animation works out there that are rotoscope, but they all have very different styles. 
because whatever art direction that you're going for, even if you are using tracing or rotoscoping, you still have to make it work and that does require a decent level of knowledge and draftsmanship. So in a professional setting, I can see why tracing can be used for consistency reasons, for getting things done in a timely manner, or to help aid an artist when they don't really fully understand something, don't have the time to mentally master it, but need to get something done. So the practice of tracing is actually quite common. Again, not every professional does tracing, but it is there as a tool. Next, I wanna talk about when does tracing become a huge disadvantage for artists or also a no-no. So when does tracing become a huge disadvantage for artists? You know, one of the biggest things is of course theft. This is a big one and why many artists disregard tracing. There's a problem where other artists steal another artist's works by tracing over their art. It's really disappointing to see more prolific artists or individuals do this to lesser known artists who are really skilled. Now to me, it becomes theft when there's no new take on the subject matter. The gesture, the composition, the idea, the lines, the execution, artistic direction, even the style. If it becomes too close to the original source material or the original artist's work, then that's really suspicious. In drawing an illustration, this could be almost identical poses, overall layout and composition, style, etc. And the same thing goes with animation, you know, key poses, timing, even if the drawing style is different, but the overall timing and rhythm, the poses, and the overall execution of the animation is so similar, that's pretty much theft. So if you are going to trace over another artist's work, whether it's animation or illustration, and you do very little interpretation of your own or changes of your own, I would say don't. And if you go as far as claiming that work as your own, that's plagiarism. And sure, you can argue that unless you paid the artist that you're tracing over, you give that artist credit or you ask the permission, you're still bound to attract some controversy and not many people will take you seriously, especially professionals who want to hire you. The next disadvantage I want to talk about is the heavy reliance on the practice. You don't want to be at a place where you can't draw because you have nothing to trace on. Imagine if you had to whip out something, but let's say your library of references aren't available. Let's say you don't have internet, you can't go online, so you can't do any Google image searches. You want to have enough foundation skills where you can draw from sheer imagination and draftsmanship to make something clear and believable first. That stuff requires a lot of mileage, practice, and study. And then if you want to finalize it with corrections, then you can go back to using heavy references or using the practice of tracing to make it more accurate. But at least a rough idea is already down and that can be done with just draftsmanship. And this leads to my next disadvantage, which is the mindless practice. It doesn't involve too much analysis. You know, when I do think of tracing, it does leave a little room for interpretation. It also leaves a little room for critical thinking. To me, tracing is the equivalent of wax on, wax off. It's mindless, but eventually it becomes a useful habit. It does build muscle memory. But there has to be a time where you just pause a bit, you know, take the time and space where you, you know, stop doing stuff and think about what you're doing and why you're doing things, why you're practicing a certain technique. You know, think about learning how to observe things and build critical thinking skills rather than mindlessly draw over an image because that can also build bad habits. And again, I think tracing is a good way to learn how to draw. It's just that you have to kind of like analyze what you're doing, how you're studying in order to benefit from the learning of it. And if you want to find other ways to build observational drawing skills where you're actually forcing yourself to look at things, you know, look at practices like blind contour drawing, the practice of drawing something without looking at your drawing, or going outdoors and just sketching from life with a sketchbook. So I have a lot of opinions regarding tracing and to the artists that have this notion of what pure art or pure draftsmanship is. And you know, there are people who believe that pure art should be reserved and tracing is for the lazy. And I wanna talk about more about the misconceptions about tracing. When it comes to students or people who clearly have never worked in this industry, there's this ongoing fantasy that professionals or skilled artists never resort to such tools and practices such as tracing. There's people out there who truly believe that drawing and art should be completely pure. Only true artists rarely use reference and they never trace. They believe that tracing is for the unskilled, the lazy, or artists who have no vision or imagination. And like I said, it's a tool. It's there at your disposal to make your life a little easier when you have to construct something within a few hours or minutes it can be used to work smarter and not harder. And remember, tracing is not always related to stealing another person's work. Personally, trying to find the right material or the reference for a thing that you wanna trace over is time consuming. Trying to find the right, accurate, specific thing that you're looking for. I don't like trying to find the exact reference I need to draw over. 
because what I tend to look for can be quite specific, and I don't want to spend too much time trying to find the right photo reference or the right film still. And if you want to make it work to whatever composition you have, you have to spend time, you know, warping that image, distorting it a bit, manipulating a bit so it matches somewhat closely to what you're trying to achieve. There's a lot of people online who clearly have never worked in studios and say a professional would never resort to tracing. And hey, guess what? I actually work in the industry and I've seen highly talented artists resort to tracing a reference because they just don't have the time to study a specific thing that they don't draw every day. Sometimes it's necessary because the director wants something specific. Maybe they give us references. Maybe they shoot their own reference. They give us photos and we basically have to draw on top of it. So it removes the whole guessing game of what clients want us to do for them. Now, another thing that I've talked about is how newer artists constantly mistake heavy reference and tracing for the same thing. I've been accused of tracing because I did something highly inspired by something else, but the overall execution is different. The timing is different. The poses are quite different. It's more inspired than it is tracing. A while back, I talked about studying from live action footage and how I would try and draw each every two to four frames just trying to eyeball what I was seeing in the live action footage and trying to implement it in my 2D animation file. Some people claim that I was rotoscoping, but most of these people don't know what rotoscoping is because if you're seeing my recordings of that, I'm not drawing over a footage. Hmm, final opinions about tracing. Now, should every artist resort to the practice of tracing? You know, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that there were necessary moments for it. Even really skilled and talented artists would trace. Tracing is a tool, but with tools, you can either use them to learn something great with it, help you solve a problem, or even steal another person's art. But tracing it and making it look good and coherent and learning how to manipulate and use those references for tracing is another skill set of its own. For me, I would rather be the person that uses heavy reference. I'm not tracing, but I have pictures that I'm heavily referencing from because tracing and drawing over an existing image, for me, it kind of limits the interpretation that I can add. But if I was required to be a lot more technical and I had to really match up with that reference and I had a very limited budget and time, then sure, I would draw over that image. Now, personally, I think it's silly to dwell on the opinion about whether tracing is bad or cheating or should it ever be used. But going around saying that tracing is never used by professionals, it's clear that you're out of touch. Anyways, that's all, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.